It's no secret that things are more expensive today than they were for previous generations. From groceries to rent to owning your own home, my family has been struggling with this for years now. My brother and I were raised in Sacramento, California. Slowly as the population has grown and the main industry has turned to tech and other big businesses, we kept moving into smaller and smaller homes because we could no longer afford the rent. I don't say this to make people feel bad for us, but to make people feel less alone. And so you can understand how my mom, my brother, and I ended up living in vehicles and becoming nomads. Being a quote unquote modern nomad is becoming the answer for more and more people. Because of raises in prices, but also because of our changing climate, it no longer makes sense to stay in one place for the whole year if you can move around. Thus enters the modern nomad. We can come in many different forms, from van life, to SUV living, to box trucks, to motorcycle touring, to RVs, to sailboats, or just a backpack and a plane ticket. If you're on the move for the majority of the year, you're probably a nomad. I've made this video because I wanted to share our perspective of living nomadic lifestyle, how we've done it and how it's given us freedom from the rat race. I then want this video to help inspire people to create a chain of videos where people will answer these same 10 questions and share their unique story. So many people are struggling to fit in the box that society has fit us into and it sometimes can seem impossible to go against the grain. I want anyone out there looking for another way of living to know that you are not alone and that there are thousands of ways you can do it. So if this video inspires you to do so, hop on the camera on your phone or on your laptop, it doesn't have to be fancy, and then answer the tag questions that I have in the description, post it to YouTube, and then add the hashtag nomad tag to the title. You can also tag me somewhere in the description or in the title so that I can see the video. I'm really excited to hear everybody's story. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week we are going to be doing a tag that I just made up because there used to be cool YouTube tags on YouTube that people would do like the friend tag, the mother daughter tag. Today we're going to be doing the nomad tag. <laughs> <laughs> the nomad tag is 10 questions about who you are, why you started living a nomadic life, and where you're going. And where I'm, all, you're going. I'm all adjusting while you're doing that. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll sorry, like, oh, my family's so embarrassing. No, not you. <laughs> Let me pull up my questions. Are you guys ready? Yes, I'm ready. Be yourself. I'm ready. Be character you're in my scared. movie. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. First of all, everybody has to tell everybody. Who you are. I'm Bex, I'm the mom of these two wonderful humans <laughs> and I don't know what else to say really. Yeah. Okay, that's Bex, that's good. Yeah. You answered the first question. Yeah. Okay, and who's this? We don't know who this is. <laughs> Mystery <Who> is man. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alex. I'm a resident of planet Earth. <laughs> 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 and the van life chose me. I didn't choose it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Louie for anyone who doesn't know I am the owner of this channel and yeah welcome to my channel and I hope you get something good out of this video. I am the daughter oh, yeah. of this woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay what is your main mode of, tra of travel as a nomad? This white van behind me right behind us right here is my main mode it is a ram pro master 1500 yes sir 118 wheelbase 118 uh, inch wheelbase yeah yeah and it's a low top but it's, it's a low top it's a mighty low top and it's a 2014 it's a all, right, all right and then alex what is your main mode of I have travel a 2014 ford e150 it's the cargo version it's not the extended but yeah, it's it's the last year they made the OG Econoline shaped vans. Everything after 2014 was a, like a Ford Transit. Yeah. But I I like the old school, uh, the okay. look to it. It's, yeah. It's new, but it's got that older look to it. But yeah, yeah, it's a Ford Econoline. And what are the names of your guys' vehicles? My van's That's name important. is Maribel. Mm hmm. And mine's Bellatrix, named after the witch woman from Harry Potter. Yes. Bellatrix Lestrange. Bellatrix Lestrange. Bella for short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And most people know what my vehicle is if you are, have been watching my channel, but for anyone who hasn't, I am riding around in a Jeep Wrangler 2016 uh, Sport S. Yeah, that's my rig. Hell and yeah. what's her name? Black Panther. Yes. <laughs> And if you know, you know. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> when did you start living this lifestyle? I actually moved into my first van November 2019. Which, but it was not this van. It was actually a. <laughs> oh no! Here goes the story. Now. I know it was a 1989 Aerostar. I was in that from like November to February, something like that, and then I moved into this van that was her van. <laughs> Which then I took the other. Van. <laughs> yeah. So we kind of we swapped. It's a crazy that, then. story. Yeah. Yeah. It, long story. You might want to like check out. Yeah, I want to check that. out some of the videos. There is a video of obtaining that other really awesome. Star. Yeah, that era yeah, store was okay. awesome. Where'd and lots of adventures LA? in that. LA. We got it in yeah. LA, yeah. Yeah. That was a whirlwind. That was a cool van too. That was a cool Old van. School. Yeah. So yeah, so my life started in my nomadic life or like vehicle dwelling life started in November two thousand nineteen. Aww. Yeah. Okay, and Alex, mm -hmm. um, um, when did you start living this lifestyle? I got my van April what year is it? April twenty twenty two. So that place is, I've been in it about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was doing the city thing for a while. Then yeah. we came out here. Yeah. But yeah. A yeah. year and a half goes by so quick. It does. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Once Big you get time. used to it. It's yeah. just like, yeah. yeah. You don't pay your rent, so you're not thinking of month to month anymore. Uh, no. <laughs> you're thinking life. Yeah. Yeah. Survival. It's a lot of perks to it. Yeah, it is. In the city. In the city, it's survival yeah. for sure. Yes. But it's its own set of challenges. Yeah. But yeah, I love my van. Oh, it's a good it's like van. Freaking awesome. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think I was gonna get it too. It just we went in somewhere and then like it just happened so randomly. It yeah. Like, Oop, I got a van now. It was meant to be. Yeah, that's why real. I say I didn't choose it, it chose me. Yeah. Like it <laughs> the just man happened. like chose Alex. Yeah. And then I built it out in like the most basic build out in around a week. And then I was living in it at the end of that week. So I was really rushing trying to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So slowly built out the stuff put a put a roof or a, a max fan solar electricity it all happened over the course of a year slowly yeah yeah but, but yeah here you are living out of in beautiful yeah. in alaska Bula. Bula. In Bula. <laughs> beautiful Bula. beautiful yeah. Bula. and i started in the summer of 2018 in that van yeah and then i lived my last semester of college in it and then you had that van by that November. And then I took like a three month break, which actually ended up being like six months because of the pandemic. Yeah. And then uh, built out the other van. Cause like, I didn't want to have rent and also have that. Yeah. But then, yeah. You should like yeah. put the video. Yeah. People should story. go watch the videos, yeah. but I've been doing this like on and off for since 2018. All right. Uh, where have you been to and what are some of your favorite places to be a nomad so far? Where have I not been? Let's see. No, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been. No, I'm kidding. I've been through to most of the states in the United States, except for maybe like four or five of them, four or five of them. I've been to Canada, parts of Canada. I went to BC, Canada, and then I went to um, the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. And so yeah, that's yeah. all the places that I've been to. What are what is your favorite? Some of your favorite places for people who are gonna do this and like, what's a good place to do like van life, nomadic living? I would say like the north, northern parts of the U.S. are really beautiful, like Montana, mm -hmm. uh, South Dakota, um, Wyoming. Those places are really beautiful. My favorite national park is Glacier National Park that we've been to. But yeah, I would say those are like That's my like favorite areas. Yeah, yeah, just, I mean, and also that. even like Northern Utah, um, parts of like Nevada. I haven't really been in Nevada like for long. Um, yeah. Like New Mexico, I love New Mexico, parts of New Mexico. So just, there, there's just most of the places where there's like lots of BLM land, you know? Yeah, lots of public land Yeah, good. lots of public land. Mm -hmm. And Alex, I know that your journey hasn't been very long. You've done a lot of city dwelling. Mm. But where were you city dwelling before? And then like, I was kind in of like Sacramento, Northern California. NorCal. Which, yeah, that was, it was, it was cool. But I, I wouldn't say it's the best place to do it at yeah. all. California, there's just so many people. Yeah. yeah. But um, in terms of cities, Seattle is really cool. Like you could Seattle. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's like, more spots. It's really beautiful. 
I love that like foggy kind of northern vibe. Yeah. But mm-hmm. here is in Alaska is really amazing. It's like it's it's a sweet spot in the southeast uh, before it gets real. too arctic. But then it's like still really good, uh, just land and country. Uh, yeah. It's the emerald it's, green. It's like the ar- an arctic. Uh, comfortable. The arctic tropics. The yeah. arctic tropics. <laughs> That's like totally the opposite. That's like yeah. an is that an oxymoron? <laughs> the arctic tropics. The arctic, arctic. No, it is tropical. It's like it's the a tropics temperate here. rainforest. It, this area is technically yeah, it's a, all pretty much the Tongass rainforest. Yeah. Or national forest and. It feels rain. like a rainforest. It's 100% yeah. a rainforest. Yeah. It's all as right. soon as you I have to keep an eye on William because he's like, I'm going to go over there. Hey, William, come here. Tell us your favorite place. Come here. He's like, I'll tell you my favorite place. Come here. William's favorite place is probably not the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are, you'd say Alaska is your favorite. Alaska, yeah, to be Alaska is the best. A city, like a big city of Seattle. Seattle because is good. Washington, for city. yeah. Washington's really beautiful. Yeah, it is. And it just it gets more and more beautiful the more north you go, for especially real. during the summer. Yep. It yeah. was like, yeah. Yeah, as soon as you break into like BC and then into here, it's just a different world. I know. It's like the mountains. It's a different trees, world. Yeah. Moss. Yeah. Moss, trees, moss. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's All the moss awesome. is nice. Yeah. It's a vibe. Berries, salmon. There's so many resources here. It's like mushrooms, salmon, deer, More mushrooms. berries. <laughs> Berry, berries, yeah. Berries. Yeah. We're looking at some berries right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can tell the native people the, mm-hmm. uh, that lived here originally really like had it made out. Yeah, yeah they, they had They lived it. abundantly here for sure. For sure. Yeah. This is a good place to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've been pretty much all of the U.S. as far as like Niagara Falls, down to Florida, over to California, Death Valley, and then up to Washington, and then from Ontario to Vancouver Island, and then Southeast Alaska so far. I haven't been to Mexico yet. Yeah. Man. But I agree. I feel like the north is the best place to live in a vehicle just because of the heat. And I've done a lot of southwest exploration and it gets very windy down there. And yeah, there's a lot of good BLM land there, but it's only really good for a few months out of the year. And then it's just kind of inhabitable, in my opinion. And then, but when you're up north, it's cold enough or like it's cold so you can get warmer, you know, just to put a diesel heater in your car. Like there's ways to deal with the weather here yeah. in a yeah, different way yeah. and it's just so abundant like alex was saying it's just there's so much to do here and so much beauty and food yeah. and when you woke up this morning you were like it feels like we're in a national park yeah i went and <laughs> took william on a walk on the beach and i was like i feel like this is like a national park yeah and it's starting to rain right now i know it's okay we'll make it through question number five why did you start living this way that's I am always curious <laughs> to know why people oh. question. But like as concisely as you can put it, like okay. so there's a couple reasons. One, I have always wanted to really travel, you know, throughout the US and stuff like that. So that was one. But I also was forced out of pretty much northern California. You know, each year mm-hmm. uh rents were going up and up and up and up and I just I could not afford to live in Northern California anymore. I pretty much was forced out of living in an apartment. Yeah. You know, in Northern California. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. And so it was kind of a combination of both. Like the timing was mm-hmm. sort of right and um you know, I always, I mean, from the time I was like a young woman, I really wanted to be a nomad anyway. So, you know, my kids were growing up and so it was challenging for the family though, you know, being separated and yeah, it was kind of, it's kind of complex, you know? So, which I'm sure many people have that similar stories, you know? Yeah. Where especially that area. Yeah. Especially in that area where you're forced <laughs> into just kind of like survival mode, yeah. you know? I was really fortunate that I was able to like open up my own business where I did virtual um, work and so it helped free me to be able to like at least travel so like Alex I didn't have to stay in the city um, you know and work kind of like a brick and mortar job I was fortunate in that way so yeah. Yeah, so that's why you did it. Yeah, so that's why I did it. I mean and it's been really good you know it's been challenging but it's also been a real gift so. A real gift. Yes. Yeah. And Alex, 
Why did you start living in oh, the man. a year and a half ago? Well, I was also in Northern California, and I was there for probably like two, two years after you left. Yeah. So it just got even more expensive. Mm-hmm. And that was and during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right mm-hmm. during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I had a couple situations where I was renting a room. But even the rooms got expensive to rent. And, and horrible roommates. Horrible yeah. roommates, yeah. Roommates. Oh, this dog, I'm sorry. William, come here. Oh, yeah. I was in Northern California, expensive, really expensive. And it just got, like, surreal how it got impossible to live there if you didn't have, like, significant other that you'd split rent with or have, like, four or five roommates. It's like, it got crazy. And I just got tired of it. and And then... Yeah, I was just, I, my whole family did the van life and did that type of thing, so. Because of similar reasons. It was, cars yeah. Oh. Yeah, so when your family does it, you kind of, to you, it seems more possible. Yeah. It's not, it's like, oh mm-hmm. shit, like other people do it too, like, that you know, and you guys knew how to build out stuff, so. I didn't feel like I was just going, like it was a shot in the dark. Yeah, I feel like we all did it for similar reasons and it was because rent was just too expensive. We couldn't yeah. afford, like you just get stuck in a, like a wheel of like, I have to pay rent, mm-hmm. paycheck to paycheck, yeah. uh, for like all the time. And so yeah. as people, I think our family is very adventurous and like pretty open-minded about things. And so like, it was just kind of like a no brainer, at least for me to be like, I'm just going to get a van you know yeah. and start living more nomadically and more and that's you know, why you freely. did it too right yeah in college. i did it in college because i didn't want to pay like a thousand dollars to live in a tiny cramped space with people yeah i was yep. just like that just does not make sense logically to me to yeah. do that when mm-hmm. i could have the freedom of like i really needed a car i was really tired of having to like take the bus an hour each way to go get groceries to like or outside my campus like it just didn't make sense for me anymore i was like if i can have a car and also a place to live and I'm hardly ever at home. Yeah. When I was in college, I was working full time and going to school. Like. Yeah. Ew. So it didn't make yeah, sense. Yeah. It didn't make sense anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind of like, and then the freedom, and then like yeah, the world cool. just opens up, and like the ability to go. Like I wanted to go to like Yosemite and like all the national parks in California, and like see stuff and do stuff and mm-hmm. experience things. So that's why I did it. Yeah. I was like, instead of only focusing about rent. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, that's yeah. a loop. Survive it. Is. It's Spin a loop. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people are feeling that right now. Definitely. And have been for years. Yeah. So that's why we're making this tag. <laughs> yeah. So people can explain why they've done it. Yeah, and there's a variety you. of reasons. I would imagine. I'm looking. That's why I wanted to, to be a tag. Like I hope. Yeah. I so hope people continue yeah. this tag. Even if I don't tag you, and you want to do this tag, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is kind of interesting. How did you start living this way? I guess we kind of covered this, but like more specifically, like did you save before? Like the logistics of it, or did you like? Yeah, the logistics more mm, so yeah. of it. Well, I had a car that was paid off, a Mazda three. I had a yeah, I had a ta- federal tax return, and then I had my car, and I just put all that money, and then I traded in the car. We went into a car dealership not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> that I would get approved, which is weird because I never bought a car before. I didn't really have, I had credit cards, but it's not like my credit was crazy amazing or anything. And then they just made it work. It was like, I I just, all I had to do was pay that money and trade in the car. And then I had a van. You were meant to have and be loved. Also, like I was getting, re- I was in town for a little while visiting and getting ready to leave. And Alex had been you had been started being like I think I'm interested in van life I'm considering it right I more so needed it yeah I more needed there was it nothing else and but. then yeah. and then I was like well let's go look at vans let's just go look and so it was so random right we were just like okay let's go look <laughs> and then we went we oh, saw yeah. this this Come van here, yeah uh-huh. it was and then, crazy and then bam they're yeah. like yeah they or they we first we did it with just the trade in and then they're like we're gonna need around a thousand dollars more. To, yeah. so that you can qualify and then I was like okay well I don't have that and then my tax return hit that literally next day. that's yes. insane yeah. it Whoa, was so I didn't realize it was that close it was, it was I realized so that it was like you know within a couple thousand dollars but it, I was it was submitted to it, it hit that day yeah. that next day and then we went back in the next day 
You found sign the paperwork. It, it was like the universe yeah. was like you have to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it That's was. Why it was. It I was, didn't know that part. It. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. It happened so smoothly. Like seriously, it could not have been any smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. When I was looking for my van, it was different, a little bit different because I could not get financed, you know, for like a newer vehicle. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I was really having a hard time saving money, like a, well, yeah, like a lot of money, you know, a good down where I could it. like go get a $30,000 vehicle or something. And so, and I had initially been looking for a bus thinking about that and then because I was hoping that Alex would move into the bus with me and he was like mom I am not living in a bus with you <laughs> so I was, I was 17 I only yeah. had one more year until I was on my own yeah so you were like any sense really. yeah you were like mom do you you were like yeah, just do what true. you need to do, do you. and yeah. so and then Louie was like mom instead of thinking about a larger vehicle think about a smaller vehicle that's mm -hmm. less expensive and so just to start with so then you can save yeah you know? so at least you're in something and so that's when we found this 1989 Aerostar and in LA. Yeah, and so we, we drove down to LA. That. Yeah, drove down to LA, got that. That was kind of a fun experience. And then drove it back up and and now and I had that and then there was and then like we the whole traded. train. And, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. worked out really well. Go watch those videos cuz yeah. we'll like fully deeply explain that. Yeah. Yeah. And so. how did I start living this way? Um one summer I went down to the south where we have some family and I looked for a van. Found this van. My grandpa, I was so lucky, he helped co-sign on it. That's how I got mine. And yeah, the payment was like $360 or whatever. And as a college student, I couldn't afford it after a while. But yeah, that's how I got that van and that's what really got me started in it. And really happy to have been able to you know basically sell that to you so that you yeah do the trade do too. the trade like, yeah so then my mom yeah. took over the payments on that and stuff yeah and then the and then we traded the trade was i got coco yeah you got that you would pay on it and you, you know yeah. completely paid it off and stuff it was great and then i had the little tiny van which allowed me to like really be kind of financially free straight out of college uh, which was super nice. Well, besides student loans, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really raining. Maybe we should rainy. move under yeah. the awning. <sighs> we had to move our setup because it really started raining. That's just the way it is here. <laughs> Sometimes it gets really rainy. All right, question seven. What are some challenges of living this style of nomadic living? <laughs> well, he's like, oh yeah, there's lots of challenges. A lot of ups there are a lot of ups and downs for sure. I would Lots say the biggest challenges for me is I don't know, I guess there are a few of them. There's like the constant need to ha like meet your basic needs. So it's like finding power, finding water, you know, those kinds of things mm -hmm. that can be sometimes challenging. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's easier definitely to live in a van. For me, it has been when I not in the city like if you're out on BLM yeah. land you go fill up water yeah. you get Living your food in the city is yeah and you yeah. go and you park and you're chill you know but mm -hmm. if you're living in the city or having to find places to like park and all that stuff it just completely changes the game you yeah. know and so yeah I mean and also I think that towards the end of van life for me it's not like the end end but before moving into this apartment that I'm in now is yeah. like having like such limited space you know and it's <laughs> it's so hard to have to like the little things like having to move five things to get to one thing like things like that would always like just started really getting mm -hmm. on my nerves and i know. do want to interject though but i feel like over time those things get easier you learn how to like put things in places where you're not having to like go through five things to get to it you know like yeah. over time at least for me i feel like you learn like the challenges do get easier you know you learn how to adapt how to make things better yeah um yeah yeah that's for me at least yeah i feel like for me it just became more annoying I <laughs> for you you were like i was I'm like done. i can't do this lifestyle full-time anymore yeah it just got to that point yeah after 40 years almost four years of doing it you know yeah, exactly so but yeah, I, so I would—I don't know. I mean, there, you know, every day is a challenge in different things, right? No matter what life you live, kind of lifestyle you live, mm -hmm. you know, it's like 
you know, some other challenges, like there's always something to fix or something's breaking, like your electric, yeah. that electric mm -hmm. doesn't work and yeah. then you get that working and then you got a leak and you're, <laughs> but it's like living mm -hmm. in a house. Or, or you know? like something you're with your engine happens. Yeah, and like there's, wait. it's just part of it. You because know? Mm -hmm. also I challenge. think that when you are living in your vehicle, like mm -hmm. your home is in your vehicle, like every single part of your life is dependent on things running smoothly. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, well you can leave your home, your brick and mortar home and like if something's not working there well you can drive to work and i don't know it's like you're just yeah you're always in i've that. had to do that before yeah, yeah there, right. like, if your car doesn't run that's your home yeah yeah so it's that's hard a challenge. Then there was one time my fuel pump went out and i had to, if you don't have the money to like stay in a hotel while it's in the shop mm -hmm. Then what are you gonna do? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, you have to have a plan. You're much you more to... vulnerable. There are, yeah. you are. That is the challenge. You are yeah. a lot more vulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would just say be prepared for that. For, for sure. For that, and yeah, it is kind of like yeah, a... definitely like have if you can save money. You know, yeah, like, have a savings if you can do that. I mean, have not everyone cushion. can do that, but yeah, like if yeah. you're thinking about, oh, should I spend this money or should I save it? Save it. <laughs> <laughs> A challenge for me has definitely been feeling like lonely on the road. Yeah, I feel like loneliness is definitely something that a lot of nomads who travel by vehicle deal with. Definitely. Um, yeah, but, but then I like second everything that you guys have to say, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I think when you're in the city, it's way harder because you have to shut in more. Yeah. You can't really be spread out because people will look at you weird or it might be illegal. Yeah. Where yeah. you're at. Mm -hmm. But at the campsite you can cook outside, you can set stuff up. It's it's it way be easier. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. City yeah. van life is City van life is definitely challenging. It's on hard mode. It's not just get a van, get a vehicle, mm -hmm. live in it and you're good like it's a house. There are it's things a completely to think about. different lifestyle. Yeah. There but it's cool. It's awesome. But it has its, its just... good things which we'll talk about, but yeah. 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 Exactly. You just have to be a certain type of person. And yeah. have it, your expectations meet the reality, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that you're not getting into it thinking like, oh, this is going to be easy, <laughs> easy road. Because there are, you know, no. might, some areas might be easier, but other areas will not be. It's exactly. not. It's yeah. Not. It's so, yeah, it is so interesting how it is different from place to place, you know? Yeah. yeah. Having been all over this country and through Canada and a lot, like, it really, like, the way people respond to you is different mm -hmm. in every place you go. Yeah. yeah. And, like, the resources are different in every place you go. This, like, specifically in the U.S. are, it's just, like, such a different, like, culturally all over the yeah. place here. Yeah. Like, it's not just the U.S. It's, like, different areas of the U.S. Yeah. Like, you have a completely different cool. experience. Yeah. Yeah, some mm -hmm. people will be like, oh, that's awesome, you live in a van. And then some people will be like, oh, you live in a van, you're a weirdo. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like here, if you, yeah, it. or they'll like be yeah. really classist and, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. classist you about it. You have to just be able to not care what they think. I've had so many yeah, people say, oh, you live in a van down by the river. <laughs> I think, just making me seem like. Like your but mom. you do like work. You work. You pay taxes. You've always worked, yeah. You like work yeah. on yourself. All of yeah. us have all wor always worked. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. we're not lazy like, yeah. at all. Yeah. But you just have to be able to like brush off the people that put you mm. in that category. Yeah. Because you know you're not if you're gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. And you are who you are, and. And, those and, and you're never... living the best like you're saving money you're like more free you know yeah but it is a challenge the yeah the view of people around you and your family and like friends and like even I don't, family yeah even it's family friends, even yeah. friends yeah. like they d don't understand and that can be a challenge because they make you can make you feel like an outsider that's yeah. for sure yeah and then that goes back to like feeling lonely, like you don't yeah. have, but there is wonderful community out here, you know, yeah. that you can. And we're see. fortunate that all three of us get it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Can you imagine that. if you're like, <laughs> yeah. no, it's like, Understands it's it. like, you're going to move into a van. That's a great decision. Yeah. In a blue collar <laughs> town like this too, people see rigs and they love it. Yeah. yeah. Really, I've met people here that think it's weird, but it's not nearly as far as like, yeah, in the city it's where Alaska. everyone's like people do so. Yeah. I agree. They Live see there, the rig you know. and they're like, "Dang, that's a cool rig!" And they ask, start asking questions about it. Yeah, yeah. they're like, yeah. "Oh, sweet." Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, good for yeah. you. That's cool. Yeah. All right. I think we definitely answered that question. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure if people do this tag, other people do this tag, they'll have their own challenges, and it will be yeah. very, yeah. Be well rounded. Well rounded. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And question eight. What was something unexpected that you learned, learned or did because of living this way? So I learned that I don't need that much space. Mm -hmm. That 
mm-hmm. like how unnecessary it is for people to have huge houses or yeah. a lot of yeah. stuff. I mean, sure, it could benefit from a little bit more space full time, but at the same time, living really minimalist is really all you need. You don't need a lot to survive. Yeah. No. You really don't. No. I would say, I would definitely agree mm-hmm. with what you just said. For me, that was kind yeah. of surprising. Yeah. Like, it is amazing how, and also I realized how much I used to use, you know, how much electricity yeah. I used to use, how mm-hmm. much water mm-hmm. I used to use, how much, yeah. just how many resources I used to overuse. And like, it is amazing, like how little you need, like how little electricity, how little water, yeah, you know, seriously, just, we live like, like the like, basics that yeah. we take for granted, you know, mm-hmm. when you live in a, a brick and mortar space. Mm-hmm. And even like the space, like now I'm in a studio apartment and it's small, but I'm like, I think I might be a little overwhelmed if it was too much bigger. Like, I'm kind of like, oh, a one bedroom would be nice, you know, to have like my hobbies and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, I agree with you. Like, you don't need a lot of space. I don't need a lot of space. I mean, everybody's different. I don't need a lot of space. Whoa. Yeah. And, and just from previous like experience, you know, we've lived in four bedroom homes we've lived in three bedroom you know homes down to like two bedroom apartments and i always have filled every crevice <laughs> the yeah. ones for everyone. right my mindset yeah. is very different now so i don't i'm not going to do that but it's kind of like a natural instinct yeah to like fill spaces and then you have yeah. all this stuff yeah that you don't need and then you end up like having to get rid of all of it <laughs> yeah stuff can be so. crushing yeah having all that stuff it's, it's a like, burden it right is, yeah. a burden yeah, even we, so we have a storage unit together that's like nine by four here on the island. And that's like all of our stuff collectively that we own other than what's in our vehicles. And then now the small, like 200 square foot studio mm-hmm. that she lives in. And like, that's the smallest amount of stuff ever. And even that's really a burden sometimes. It's like, ah, it do is. I really need this? But it's like, yeah. yeah. It's hard to give up everything. Yeah, too. it is hard to give up and everything. And it's kind of, it's like a balancing Yeah, act. It's kind of like, okay, well... I don't want to sacrifice giving up everything and like why should I have to but then it's also like do I really need this to be sitting in storage where I'm paying money and I never use it but it's like such a yeah it's like a a hard thing to do yeah I think something unexpected for me was how much I would enjoy being in nature and being in super remote places because when I first started doing this I was living like in the city I was living in Oakland going to school and stuff and I thought that would be the end all be all for me in van life I thought I would always be like a city kind of dweller and like go to national parks and stuff or whatever and so it was just super unexpected for me to be like actually I really love going to remote places and living this lifestyle in a kind of rural sense you know Mm -hmm. And that was super unexpected. I feel like living this way can sometimes open up things that you wouldn't have ex- tried before, you know? Yeah. You yeah. wouldn't have, like, done. Like, even to be here in Alaska, yeah. like, that was super unexpected and yeah. something that um, I think if we didn't live this lifestyle, it wouldn't have turned in that direction. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I like think... the three of us in Alaska. Yeah, in South East Alaska. Wild. Of all it's places. Wild. In the whole world. But then, yeah, yeah, but like when you live a life that's more present, because I feel like often, you know, when you're working a job, paycheck, paycheck you're thinking about the future. You're think- not in the present. You're not listening to what you want to be doing for real, you know? You're just trying to make it work, which is completely understandable. But yeah, but then when you have that time to really just explore the things you like doing, mm-hmm. unexpected things can happen. Like yeah, being true. in an area of the world you never thought that you would love, but you love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there was a second part to this question. Oh yeah, has there been anything that you, I guess like move coming here, but have there been any like activities, things that you did because, you know, you've never... Because of the lifestyle? Yeah, because of the lifestyle, things that you've tried, jobs that you've worked, you know, things. I think for me, I never thought that I would have traveled alone throughout the U.S. Yeah, that's Um, a good one. Yeah, I mean, I, as a younger woman, I always wanted to, but then, you know, I had kids Mm -hmm. and a family and all of that and just kind of lost focus on that. And looking back, I'm like, wow, I actually did that. I traveled and went into some really remote places and I was scared some of the times because it was like so new, you know, and foreign. But like, that's something that I think is surprising. 
Yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't have come here, and that wouldn't have let me become work as a commercial fisherman. Yeah, yeah that's super that, unexpected. Yeah, yeah that is a direct result of having a van to live in. Yeah. So I wouldn't have been able to get out Yeah, here. otherwise how would you have done yeah. that? I don't yeah. know, in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And that was an amazing experience. Freaking yeah. seeing what it's like to catch salmon in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> wild, right? It's pretty crazy. It's so wild. <laughs> I mean, it's like a once in a lifetime like freaking experience. Yeah. Like, so coming up here, yeah. Working on a boat, even crazier. Yeah, both of those. <laughs> Wouldn't have been able to do without a van. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, the next one, question nine. You guys feel like you answered that question? Yeah. 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 Okay, question nine. Uh, what are the pros of living a nomadic li- lifestyle in vans and vehicles, basically? Freedom, money, um, your own space, mm-hmm. independence. You don't feel like you're yeah. using, more, you're not taking up more space than you need to. Our footprint you're is minimalist. smaller. Right? Your yeah. reef sources, in yeah. A, in a sense, yeah. Taking, being able to try new foods. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean. I just think places. being able to be like, you know, I'm kind of tired of this place. I'd like to just go somewhere else. Being able to do that, be able to just like pick up and leave and have your whole life with you is amazing just go yeah Yeah. to be like you know i think i'm gonna i don't know just being able to like change your mind about stuff is really freeing yeah i like that you don't have to work as much yeah you don't you know you don't need as much money which is a finances thing but like you don't necessarily have to work 40 hours a week yeah you know you're saving money yeah Yeah. and if you do then you're saving money towards like another dream or a thing you want to do you know Oh, that's the best. Yeah. Getting away from the rat race. Yeah. Yep. Man. Definitely. Those are the pros. Traveling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, traveling. Yeah, if you're able to, for sure. You don't have to answer to anyone. Yeah. Yeah, when you rent, you're not paying another person's mortgage. Mm-mm. You're not. You can have a dog. <laughs> yeah, you can have a dog, that's yeah. for sure. I definitely yeah. feel like having a space that's smaller is... I don't know. There's like pros and cons. Like it's for me, it's like having it's cozy Mm -hmm. and you know, when I like close up at night and put up all my, you know, blinds and turn on the lights, it's like, it's just heaven. It's like a little Mm -hmm. slice of heaven, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really special. Yeah, seriously. I think that's really special. And sure you can do that in a house and you know, Mm -hmm. you can have your safety and I, but for me, I like, and then waking up and being in a place that's beautiful, you know? Yeah. I don't know. And we've always kind of been, like, the fan, kind of family where it's, like, we've always moved every, like, two, two and a half years. Yeah. yeah. I mean... We didn't live in anywhere long. Whether we wanted years. to or not, kind of. But yeah. I mean, that's all, like, a whole nother long story, but... <laughs> it's I habit kind, now. I kind of grew up that way. It's, like, yeah. a tradition in our family, whether it was wanted or unwanted, you know? Mm-hmm. So... That's like a whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole nother, I won't get into that, but whole other thing. that's a whole nother track of discussion. Mm-hmm. All right. Last question is what advice would you give someone who wants to live a nomadic lifestyle and is just starting out? Plan, have plan. a backup plan. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't F yourself over. Don't have yourself yeah. over. By not having a plan? Do By not some... having a plan, yeah. Or having a rig that, if you know something could go wrong, just think of what you would do if yeah. you yeah. popped the tire, if it. you yeah. had a mechanical issue, yeah. or yeah. try to build it out a little bit before you're on the road, because yeah. I've built mine out while living in it, and that's, that's really hard. I've done that that's before, too. That's hard. Yeah. It's that's really not... hard. Yeah. I would say if you can afford to rent a couple different setups, do it. You know, for a couple weeks. Yeah, to try them out because then you'll know kind of like what you want personally and what kind of travel you want to do or like what kind of lifestyle you want to live. Are you a city dweller? Are you more of like a back roads dweller? You know? Yeah. Like, and then you'll know what kind of vehicle. Yeah. So you then need you a don't. Four by four. Do yeah. You need a, and you yeah. don't, don't like go like out a, and like you have a you know like a vehicle that's not what you want and then you end up selling it and starting all over. Kind yeah. Of thing, or being know? disappointed or be, and stuck with it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You don't need a sprinter. You don't need a high roof. No. Nope. You don't need yeah. extended. You don't even need four by four. 
yeah. all the fancy stuff. You don't I mean, need any true. room. He yeah. started in the Astro, which was... Yeah. The Aerostar, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. If you need yeah. to just, like, save money, just go with the cheapest thing and figure it out, you know? It's an adventure. <laughs> yeah. You know? it's, it's just so freeing automatically. Like, what was that feeling for you when you, like, didn't have to pay rent anymore, you know? It was weird. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like, is this for real? Mm -hmm. uh, I just kept waiting for like the other shoe to drop. Like, okay, this, there's got to be more to this. Yeah. You know? That and is. when I first moved into the, the Aerostar, I was living in Sacramento in Northern California. Mm -hmm. So I lived there for six months about until I got into this vehicle and then kind of moved on. But yeah. Yeah. So that was interesting. So, yeah, I would say yeah, my advice would be definitely plan. Plan, yeah. No, yeah, no. Are you going to be doing city life? Are you going to be out on BLM land? Are you traveling? What are you doing, mm -hmm. you know? So that that will help you decide how to build it out. Yeah. What, you know, what mm -hmm. your needs are. Kind of go through, like, your day. What do you do? Do you cook a lot? Do you need more counter space? Mm -hmm. Do you need more storage space? Do you, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of stuff, yeah. I think, because... Because um, then you're put, not putting in effort that isn't worth that your time. That isn't practical. Or yeah. your money, you know? Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I would definitely say also, like, have savings if you can. You know, have kind of a backup plan, like Alex backup said. Backup plan. Yeah. You know? You need like, a backup plan. Yeah, like, what are you going to do if your van breaks down? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where do you, you know, have roadside assistance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, have a contingency plan for your contingency plan. Yeah, really. That'll make it go smoothly. I mean, you don't obviously absolutely need to have savings to go on the road. Of course I think, not, yeah. I think it just makes it easier, you know, if you can swing it, yeah. you know. Yeah, you need yeah. A backup, but have a plan. You need something in case something At least have a yeah. plan. Whether but if you can't because, afford yeah. it, I don't think that should necessarily yeah. be the thing that stops you, you know, from no. doing yeah. it. But, but I wouldn't it's... say go out with, like, a, the cheapest, even if, like... Don't go out with the cheapest van that might break down and without a backup plan. Right. Well, yeah, then obviously. You could be, yeah. I've experienced that is you can be left stranded. Yeah. And then if you don't have money for a tow, you don't have money to take it to a shop. Mm -hmm. you can or get, for a motel. To, where do you or go? A motel you can, to stay in. Yeah. You could really just be stuck somewhere. Yeah. And then the city can mm -hmm. come tow it or take it or oh yeah that looks like, like really, uh, it's crazy flashback from the war in northern california <laughs> it's it's like a freaking easy path to be on the streets it is so yeah you just yeah. have to be weary of that and be realistic too yeah definitely yeah. see where it's yeah. gonna go but, but don't also, be scared either cause, yeah but don't let anything stop you and also be it. excited get excited about your yeah, ride because that's man. the whole reason why if you're excited. thinking about doing this that's the whole reason why you're doing it because it's exciting plan and some cool places to go like do yeah. some fun stuff especially if you're able and, to work on the road or ooh, able to be nomadic you know other advice would be to like take it easy in the beginning like don't pre feel like you have to be like like absolutely have it all your shit together right then and there you know like it's a different lifestyle for a lot of people who have never experienced it and you just got to slowly work into it you know be yeah. kind to yourself you you're know not gonna all like of it's a all be an yeah you're not all of a sudden gonna be like just like everything's perfect you know you're gonna have to take some time to learn what works for you so be nice to yourself and like don't compare yourself to other people yeah that's so easy to do with social media i think and live your own journey with everybody's this kind of nomadic living mm -hmm. yeah. yeah everybody's experience is gonna be different just like the three of us we've all had different uh, yeah experiences. exactly it's always yeah. unique to who you are and yeah. i think that when i went into it i also expected that it would be exactly like the next person on youtube or yeah. like the person that i've been following for a while and it's like no your experience is gonna be different because you're yeah. unique yourself you know yeah so yeah that's a very important thing to consider and to keep in mind like yeah. Because that way you don't feel like you just, you're, you're failing in any way. Because you're not, there's no right way to do this. Yeah, there isn't. <laughs> Absolutely it, no right way. Yeah, make it work for you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And enjoy. That's my advice. And enjoy, enjoy the process. It. Enjoy the process. Right? Yeah. Take as it a much day as at a time. Can. Yeah, yeah. Take it a time. Enjoy it. And you know, and oh, this I think is the most important <laughs> advice. Oh. <laughs> know when it's time to stop. Oh, yeah. And it's okay. You know what I mean? If you do this for three months or six mm -hmm. months or a year or whatever it is, it's okay to not want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am. I don't want to live in a fan full time anymore, mm -hmm. current right now. Mm -hmm. And so 
I am allowing myself to do that without any guilt, without any you yeah. know, weird feelings. Like this is where, I mean, we all live in eras. We all have different eras of our lives, right? And, and then on top of that, don't feel bad if you want to go back to it. Like, <laughs> cause that's where I'm Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm all like, it's okay to take a break. Yeah. You know, you're not proving anything yeah. by just do what you want. Do what you want. Who cares? Yeah. Don't <laughs> do put what, any rules on yourself. Yeah, just do what feels right? good. Like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to do it anymore, do it. If you're ready to do it again, do it. Yeah. You know, it's a lifestyle. There's no, it's a mindset. Exactly. You'll always be part of the crew. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope that some of this information and our experience as van life nomads <laughs> for our 10 years of combined experience yes. um, can help you in your journey wherever you are. Um, yeah, this has been the nomad tag created by Adventure Time. Louie, don't forget that. <laughs> um, I'm Pass it forward. I think that our community could value by sharing their experiences. I agree. You know? Yeah. So, you know, uh, my feelings aren't going to be hurt if you don't do the tag, but I think that it would be helpful and cool. And then after you're done, tag three more people that you think would be interesting to hear from. Keep it going. Keep the tag going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just my nostalgia for the old days of YouTube, I guess. I'm old now. <laughs> and uh, if you're curious to see any of this lifestyle in action, check out some of my videos. Uh, yeah, I will be posting every Friday for a very long time, forever. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you to my family, Alex ah, and Bex. Yes. I will put their mm -hmm. social media in the description below if you want to follow them in their journey. And yeah, thank you guys. Peace. Love you. Yes, Wah. Forehead <laughs> cast. Bye.